Mr. and Mrs. Malhotra have been married for 10 years and they have two kids. Recently, they found out that they were expecting a third child, which was quite an unexpected shock for the Malhotras because they have been religiously using birth control over these years. Well, sometimes those methods of birth control can fail that could result in a pregnancy. This is when the Malhotras sat down to discuss more permanent methods of birth control. And those permanent methods of birth control for both men and women involve surgery. So, they are surgical methods. Now, it makes sense to perform the surgical method, to perform the surgery on the reproductive parts in both male and female, right? Because they are the structures responsible for producing sperm and egg and fertilization and pregnancy. So, here we have the main structures in the male and female reproductive structures, just the main ones highlighted. In males, we have the testes and vas deferens and in females, we have the ovaries and fallopian tubes. The testes, the pair of testes produces sperm and the pair of ovaries releases one egg each month and when these two meet, when the sperm and egg meets, it results in fertilization and then the further development of embryo which results in pregnancy. So, a surgical method of birth control must make sure that this doesn't happen. The sperm and egg don't meet at all. So, how does that work? Let's first start with the surgical method of birth control for males. Here we have the male reproductive structures with the most important structures labeled. You have a pair of testes which produces sperm. The sperm then travel up to the epididymis which is a highly coiled small structure that sits right on top of the testes. From the epididymis, the sperm travels through this tube known as the vas deferens and then as it travels through the vas deferens, it receives secretions from the seminal vesicles, the prostrate gland and the bulbourethral gland. Finally, sperm which is now called semen travels down the urethra and is ejaculated through the penis. Now here's where we have to figure out where to perform the surgery so that the sperm doesn't leave the body. We can start with the testes because they are the structures that produce the sperm. Well, that would create complications because the testes is also responsible for synthesizing this hormone known as testosterone. And testosterone is needed for proper metabolism and sexual functions like libido. So, removing testes could affect synthesis of testosterone which would cause complications. The epididymis is very small and closely attached to the testes and it's quite difficult to remove the epididymis. The urethra and the penis serve as a common passageway for both semen, that is sperm and urine. So if we block the urethra or the penis in somehow, then that would affect excretion of urine as well. So we are left with the vas deferens now. And that is where the surgery is performed. And the surgery that makes sure that sperm is not ejaculated of, out of the body, the procedure known as sterilization is also called a vasectomy. Vasectomy, the vas deference vas, ectomy means to surgically remove. Now, how does vasectomy work? So, here you have the vasectomy procedure done where the part of both vas deference tubes, both tubes need to be cut because both testes can produce sperm. It doesn't make sense to just cut one tube. A small part of both the tubes are cut and tied up like this. So, this makes sure that the sperm cannot cross the vas deferens and enter the urethra from where they are ejaculated. So, what happens is whatever sperm is produced in the testes, it stays here only. It cannot pass this cut and tied part and reach the urethra. So, whatever sperm is here, which is not ejaculated, is eventually degraded by the body and removed from this place. But what about the sperm that is already here? The sperm that travelled through the vas deferens and reached this part before the surgery was performed. Well, they can still be ejaculated out, which is why doctors advise males to use some other form of protection like condoms while having intercourse to make sure that pregnancy does not occur. After a few weeks, after vasectomy, after a few weeks, whatever sperm here is either ejaculated or degraded. After that, there is no problem because the sperm cannot travel past this point. So, that's how vasectomy works. Now, let's move on to the surgical method for females. Here we have the typical female reproductive structure. We have a pair of ovaries, a pair of fallopian tubes, the uterus, 
the bottom most part of the uterus known as the cervix and the vagina. The ovary releases one egg each month. So it makes most sense to remove the ovary, right? Because that's the structure that releases the egg. Well, not so fast. The ovaries are also responsible for the synthesis of these hormones, estrogen and progesterone. And they're very important for proper metabolism in females. Just like how testosterone is important in males, estrogen and progesterone are important in females. So it doesn't make sense for the ovaries to be removed. What about the uterus? Well, the uterus is where the embryo grows, where the baby develops, right? So removing the uterus would make sure that pregnancy does not occur. The baby cannot grow at all. But the uterus is where the endometrial lining thickens each month and is shed in the absence of pregnancy, which is known as menstruation. Now, if the uterus is removed and menstruation cannot occur, that further causes a lot of hormonal imbalance in women. So removing a uterus would cause further complications in women. That's why it's not performed so easily. Now we are left with the fallopian tube. The surgical method is performed on the fallopian tube. And that is known as tubectomy. Tubectomy, tube because fallopian tube. And ectomy means to surgically remove. So how does tubectomy work? In tubectomy, the parts of the fallopian tube are cut and tied. Now it is very important again to make sure both parts are cut and tied. Both pairs are cut and tied because this ovary will release one egg one month and this will release the egg the other month. So to prevent any form of accidental pregnancy, both the sides of fallopian tube are cut and tied. Now what happens here is that sperm cannot travel past this point to meet the egg. The egg lays in waiting in the fallopian tube and the sperm and egg fuse together in the fallopian tube only. And after the sperm and egg fuse, the embryo moves here where it gets implanted in the uterus and leads to pregnancy. But if the fallopian tube is cut and tight, the sperm cannot even meet the egg and fuse to fertilize. So this is also thought of as a near permanent solution of birth control in females. Tubectomy. Now something that you have to remember and it's very important is that these procedures have to be performed under proper medical conditions, under proper surgical conditions by a proper licensed medical practitioner. And that's very important to prevent the occurrence of infections or serious complications. And one more thing to remember is that they are near permanent solutions of birth control and even if they can be reversed, after reversing, the chances of pregnancy are very low. So this is thought of as a last resort of birth control. If you get it done, it's almost permanent. So before getting these procedures done, you need to think a lot and make sure that this is the best choice for you.